No, they gave me, I'll tell you guys, because it was 1997, it didn't, make a, it didn't make a dent in the debt that I owed. Not even, when you get a check and you don't make a dent, like you're like, do I pay any of the debt off? Do I fucking, because I can't pay it all off with the fucking dent. I'm, I owe an attorney, I owe the fucking, uh, I owe child support. I, I think I owed everybody. I owed fucking, at that point, yeah, I had some friends I owed personal cash to. You know, thank God they weren't loan sharks or nothing. They would take little payments. I was fucking struggling. Oh, my God. At, in 1996, I made $9,800 as a comedian living in Seattle. Okay? And the before whole the whole year, getting 50s and $100 bills. And that's for the people who claimed, who sent W-9s and shit like that. Oh, I'm not talking about the people who paid 25 or 50 So all in all, you made like 11000 so you figured I made eleven thousand dollars? No, I made eleven and ninety six, maybe twelve and ninety seven, and maybe I think one year I made six thousand dollars. In ninety five, I made six thousand dollars, and what makes it even the worse that the year before that I made seventy thousand dollars, being a sports betting guy, and I made sixty in the month of December. 60000 in one fucking month. And I took a big chunk of that debt off, but there was still tons of debt. So when I got the deal from Bronx County, it was 25000 But you got to remember, guys, I had to move with that money. I had to get an apartment with that money. I had to get settled with that money. The agents. At that time, I didn't have an agent. I closed that with an attorney who charged me $250 flat. You know, it was fucking great, you know. So they gave me 25 fucking grand to, to move, which was great when you look at it on paper, but not fucking really. And, you know, but again, beggars can't be fucking choosy, right or wrong. If you stay on a fucking, uh, on a cold sidewalk, eventually you're going to get a little bit of sun. So I don't care. Eventually I was supposed to get a paycheck like that. I, Doug, I never told you about Bronx County. I went in, Doug, they had high hopes for me. This is like a Hollywood story. Like, I love Roseanne Barr. I've always been a fan of Roseanne Barr, but I enjoy her story better than anything in the world. How she was in the fucking original room, and Mitzi saw her, and throw her in the main room, and next you know the Tonight Show saw her that night, and she got the Tonight Show, and her life changed. You know, I wish it was that happy. I wish it was that I, th I wish everybody had that fucking story. You know, you put your work in, your family struggled. She had to, like, leave her husband. Like, she went to Denver, uh, L.A. on her own without her family, and she fucking hit, you know. And that that's, that's a great story, but that doesn't happen to everybody. That doesn't happen to fucking everybody. What are we talking about anyway? Bronx County. Bronx County. So when they came to me, I was at Seattle. It was Thanksgiving. It was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And the club, if you knew anything about the Comedy Underground, they gave you... Comedy Underground was a very strong and unique club. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday belonged to the comics. What that means is that they were teaching you already in 1995 how to promote your own nights. So Monday night was an open mic. Tuesday night was an open mic. Wednesday was an in-house show, and Sunday was an in-house show. I would do, I would get a show with like Tana Manu, Josh Wolf, Brody, and we would call it something, the Gobble Gobble Show. We'd sell tickets for 10 bucks. If 50 people showed up, we'd chop up 500 bucks, you know? We'd go to eat or something like that. It was no big fucking deal. I walk into this thing in Seattle, I'm like, Living on fucking nothing, you know, I'm trying to snort coke. I'm living on an office. I was living in an office paying $125 a month, and I was basically sleeping on a towel on the floor, writing jokes. I had a 1-800 number in there. I could call out, and people could call me on the 1-800 number. Don't ask. <laughs> and I used to take shits out the window. I could pee it. They didn't have a, they had a toilet. No, they had no bathroom. And on that thing. So I had to pee out the window and shit out the window. 
So in the middle of the night, I would just open the window. Was and the I, floor, was it up high? I was like on the fourth floor, and there wasn't, <laughs> and there wasn't a bathroom on that floor. So I would have to open, and then, oh, and let's go back to this. There wasn't a window in my office. So I would have to walk to the back. You know how they have uh, in the back of a building, it would be facing the ocean, and they would have the, the sound, as you call it in Seattle, and they would have stairs, fire escape. I would have to climb up on the fire escape, take the Cuban egg roll out, and just fucking piss from there, and people would be walking by. And from time to time, I would have to take my ass and shit on the fire escape, and I would throw it away. But every once in a while, a little turd would slip in between the fucking things, and I would hit somebody in the bottom or somebody would, I don't think I hit somebody. That, that was rough. So when they came to, like, Wednesday night, I could see if I was in L.A. or New York, and MTV comes up to you or, you know, Somebody comes up to you, CBS or NBC or Netflix. That's one thing if you're in a comedy club, but if you're in a metropolitan area, like if you're in New York or L.A., you expect somebody from time to time to go, hey, I'm with this agency. Hey, I'm with this fucking management group. It's just, you know, that's what they do. They go out at night. But when you're in a club in Seattle, the night before Thanksgiving, when people come up to you, they're like, hey, man, I like that joke. Hey, I'm from Jersey, too. This little nerdy guy came up to me. He's like, hey, can we have a word? And I'm like, I had so many things going on in my world at that time. I had cops looking for me, people looking for me, private investigators looking for me. So I was like, what the fuck is this? What's up? And he's like, listen, I uh, have a pilot at CBS, and I've been looking for this character, and I cannot find him. You're the fucking character. And I'm like, come on, man. He's like, you're the fucking character. And I'm like, Pfft. All right, and I go, where are you from? And he goes, I'm from, I'm from, I live in L.A., but he goes, I have a place, and my mother lives in Seattle. I came up for Thanksgiving. We came out. We were down here eating dinner. We came out to see a comedy show. You popped up. It was like maybe four or five of us. And he goes, you popped up. He goes, tell me that you speak Spanish. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, you're fucking perfect. What they were looking for was somebody Spanish who didn't look Spanish. That's what they wanted. They wanted somebody Spanish who didn't look Spanish. So the guy gave me his card. He took my information, which was a pager number, and the phone number to the comedy club, the manager at the comedy club, and he said, I'll be in touch. And I couldn't sleep. I could not fucking sleep, man. I could not fucking sleep for weeks. I was so ecstatic that somebody finally, and he didn't hit me back. And I started to get worried. I'm like, and then I started to go in that funk, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, this motherfucker hit me one day, and he's like, hey, the pilot's happening. I need you in L.A. in January. When was this? This is December 13th of 1996. 